Hi everybody, how are you all doing? And welcome to this week's Mouthworth of Southworth show with Denise Southworth on WFM 97.2. Traditionally, poetry is seen as very much a middle class, well educated profession or even pastime, which is a completely outdated and narrow minded avenue of thought. And one within Shaw resident is proving my point. It's always great to have big celebrities on my show, but I get just as much, if not more, pleasure than to have than in having local people made good on my show. And my interview today is with Steve Higgins, a local man. Here's the interview now. So I've got Steve on the phone, Steve Higgins. Steve, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to me today. Yeah, that's great. It's, it's been great. I'm happy to be here. Well, you're definitely the kind of person we're looking for on Withenshaw Radio, somebody who's Withenshaw born and raised and has just written a new book of poetry. But it's it's true to say there's more to your life than your poetry. Tell us a little bit about your background. You did say to me you're Withenshaw born and raised. So let's uh, hear your Withenshaw background. That's right, yeah. I grew up in uh, Withenshaw. Uh, my dad obviously came from Withenshaw and I used to go to Cross Acres infants and juniors and then went to Shaston School, which sadly has been knocked down. So what did you do? I mean, you're not someone who's been writing books all your life, so what, what was your career? What, what have you been doing work-wise all these years? Right, well, what, what I used to do, uh, when I was first job uh, leaving school, I worked in an insurance company in, in Manchester, and um, I must have been there about four years. I did get a little bit bored with it. And uh, me and my friend went to live in Spain, or we planned to go and live in Spain. We went over to a place called Retima. We had little jobs in bars and stuff like that. To be honest, after about four weeks, I got a bit fed up because it, it was great to go to you know places like that. But when you're there all the time, you soon get a little bit fed up of it. So I, I came back to the UK and obviously went back to my mum and dad. And uh, my dad wasn't happy at all because I didn't have a job. So he was on me to go and get a job. And he ended up getting a job on the buses. And I thought, oh, I'll only be there for a few years. But it's just something, you know, to bring some money in to show me dad up. And I ended up being, I think I did 17 years on, on the buses. But uh, I kept sort of leaving and coming back, leaving and coming back. And it started out, this was like in the late 70s when, you know, I had bus conductors. Mm. So I was there now as a bus conductor, able to be a driver, and then everything went to be, you know, one man buses. And, um, but at the time I was, I've always wanted to be a writer and I was interested in writing. So what I did, I took all that stuff about living at home, going to work in Spain, being a bus driver, and made it into a little novel. And uh, there's a book called Floating in Space, which uh, I actually self published. And that was like my first, um, uh, Foy into to writing. And um, the thing with self publishing a book, it, it's all right publishing the book. I mean, that, that's one thing. But the next thing you've got to think is who, who's going to buy it? Who's going to know about it? Well, nobody's going to know about it unless you, you publicize it yourself. So then I started, I started uh, an internet blog and I've got a YouTube page where I make little videos about my books and my stories and everything. And it is difficult, absolutely, for me to do all that marketing because that is the only way you're going to sell your, 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 your book, basically, or your product. Um, so that was how I did my first book. So go on, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say that the poetry book was completely different. I mean, I've always been quite interested in poetry. And I don't know if you've heard of it, a site called writeoutloud.net where people can go on it and write poems and publish them and then other poets, you know, chat about it or make comments. I need to put all my poetry on there. And then I started making them into little videos for YouTube. So at first I used to just put the camera on me, you know, and just recite the poem to the camera. But then I started, I did a few years back go on there, a video production course. I started doing things a little differently. You know, I did a little bit of music with um, stock pictures and stuff and making a different kind of video. And uh, I think those videos got picked up by a company called Cyberwit to publish Poet. And they came to me and said, uh, you know, we quite fancy doing an anthology and have you got enough poems? And I managed to cobble together, I think it's about, um, I'm sure there's about 50 poems in, in my book. They're not particularly long, but I admit I only do really short poems. Um, but that, that was quite exciting for them to come out of the blue to me and I want to publish my poems. 
And I would imagine, I hope I'm not putting words into your mouth, that there was nobody at school that sort of encouraged you to do something that was probably seen a bit too high and mighty for someone from a working class background. I mean, I, I had a personal interest in poetry. I've always been interested in Dylan Thomas. He's my, my favourite poet. Mm. And uh, I, I think I got interested in Dylan by seeing a, a TV a programme about him. And then I started reading books about him and reading his poetry. And I thought, oh, you know, I quite fancy that. I like to understand myself. Which I've always done. I've always been a little scribbler in notebooks. And uh, sometimes I'll scribble little ideas down and come back to them later. And, and build them into to poems. Um, but yeah, you're right. And it's not a, really a sort of working class thing, in it, unless you're somebody like John Cooper Clark. He's probably the only working class poet I can think of. And I do like some of his work. Some of his work is really good. Poetry is a creative thing, but there's a lot of things as well that I've created. Even things like someone who takes a picture of a sunset when they're on holiday and puts it on Facebook. That is being creative, so you can be creative on a lot of different levels, not just writing books and everything and poems, but simple things like that. And the great thing about poetry as well, my poems, I should say, are very, very short ones, but that is the nature, I think, of social media. If you go on Twitter, you can only use, is it 140 characters? I think they've just raised it, but it used to be different before. You have to slightly yeah. raise it, but it's still not really very much. <laughs> yeah, so things like that, you know, even a Facebook post, I think, can be created. You take a, a fabulous picture and um, put something witty to go with it. So it's all about being creative in whatever way you can, even if it's just, like I say, a social media post. Now, you mentioned your site. What you're going to need to do now is tell us, first of all, where we can buy your books and where we can contact you or, you know, look at your social media. So mm. do you want to give us the details of that? Uh, so my website is stevehigginslive.com and uh, you can find a lot of my stuff just by searching at Steve Higgins Writer and Blogger and that usually takes you to either my web page or my YouTube page. My YouTube page is called Steve Higgins Writer and Blogger and obviously once you're on YouTube you can watch my poems and all kinds of films that I've got on there. And uh, your poetry book, is that on Amazon or how would people uh, be able yeah, to Yeah, I mean, if you go to uh, stevegingslive.com, there's a how to buy the books uh, section. You just click on it and it'll take you to Amazon. Or, yeah, you can just go straight to amazon.co.uk and search for a lot of your words. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Well, do you know, Steve, it's been fabulous talking to you because, you know, what I want to show the people of Withenshaw is that, you know, people think, you know, if you come from Withenshaw that, you know, you, you, you can only aspire to so many things or such types mm -hmm. of things. You mustn't let people's negativity about, you know, council estates or working class people or what people wrongly perceive Withenshaw to be about. Let that get in the way. So you're a prime example. So listen, Steve, keep in touch. Any more books, give us a shout and we can um, do a promotion on that. But thank you so much for your time. Call us on 0161 437 3715 or email the studio at studio at wfmradio.org.